a lot of people put a latch type on their door and that latch, bears are pretty smart. Bears will figure out that latch. Let's talk about keeping chickens in a northern climate and some of the unique problems that we run into, including predators and cold weather. Those birds are itching to get outside. We wanted to show you how our winter coop is set up and introduce you to our birds and what are the purposes for our birds on the Wilderstead. And also just clarify where exactly we are in the north because north means different things to different people. So we're located in the Algoma region in northern Ontario. We're in the zone three area depending on where you are in this region and we are located right beside the largest lake in Canada which produces a lot of humidity, moisture, in the winter a lot of snowfall and it makes it an interesting climate for keeping animals in the winter. So we see maximum low temperatures usually around negative 30 degrees Celsius. That's kind of on the extreme end but we do get those temperatures here. It's a little bit different than where we started in Manitoba where for three months of the year you were looking at negative 20 degrees Celsius to negative 40 degrees Celsius. But if there's anything we've learned keeping chickens both here and in Manitoba, there's not much of a difference really. Not much of a difference at all. It's all about shelter and humidity. And we'll show you the methods that we use in order to keep a good shelter for them in the winter and keep down the, those humidity levels. Because you want happy chickens. Happy chickens lay lots of eggs and happy chickens produce a lot of meat. Yes, with that being said though, we do not artificially light our coop because we don't mind having less like eggs in the winter because again, happy chickens. Yes, they need a break. The chickens need a break throughout the winter. Okay, let's let these birds outside so we can do a bit of work. Once Cornelius decides that it's safe to come out, the rest of the chickens follow. We like to get our chickens outside. Every morning we open the door and it really is their decision whether or not they wanna come outside. It's good for them in the winter to get the fresh air. In the summer they can roam really anywhere. So we like to put straw down and hay outside to keep their feet warm. Give it a little bit more of the scratching feeling when we throw out the scratch out here in the morning and our compost leftover food. And we also keep a small dust bath area out here for the chickens throughout the winter just so that they have access to something that they can get into and clean themselves up a little bit. It is great for them to get this fresh air and to get out of the coop. And it also will help us do our winter coop maintenance. Our chicken coop is about 20 inches off the ground. It is 9 feet by 11 feet and the roof is slanted so the snow sheds off the back in the winter. We have changed up the design of a coop a little bit in order to be able to have a people area to store their food and their straw and you have easy access to their eggs without going into where the chickens are. We'll probably be expanding our flock at some point so this divider will come down and we'll build storage outside for their food and other stuff. We are currently keeping our feed for the chickens in these two metal garbage cans inside the coop and we're using these metal garbage cans to make sure that the, the feed is rodent proof. Now it's time for winter coop maintenance, which really isn't that much when you're using the deep litter method. All we really do is come in here and throw down a fresh layer of straw that puts a fresh layer of straw above the old stuff, which is allowed to decompose below that fresh layer and add a little bit of extra warmth to the coop. And you don't really have to worry too much about spreading the fresh straw around. The chickens will come in and they will do a great job of that. It's always nice just to reload their nesting boxes with a little bit of fresh straw. Makes it a little bit more inviting for the birds to go in there. When the birds sit in there, there's a good chance they're going to be pooping in there too. The only electricity that we run in here throughout the winter months goes to this heated water. And this just reduces the amount of trips that we need to make out here with water. It's roughly once every two to three days that we fill this up. This just allows them to have easy access to water, in particular when they don't feel like going outside. 
when they're outside, typically they'll eat the snow that's out there or they'll drink out of the water that we keep outside, but that freezes up within a couple hours most days. The water we have supported twice. So it's supported by this chain, which is hung from the ceiling. And we also have it sitting on top of a milk crate, just so that if the birds start flying around in here, maybe they get into a fight or something, it's not going to get knocked over. Not completely knocked over at least. And that just prevents water from getting onto the ground in here because moisture is not your friend in a winter chicken coop, especially in these climates. Our egg production is lower in the winter. We get between three and four eggs a day. And that is mainly because we do not supplement the light in the coop. We want to give them a break over winter and so they tend to lay less because the hours of light in the day is lower. We usually come out a couple times a day to check for eggs so that they do not freeze and crack while they're sitting in the nesting boxes. Now as far as ventilation in our coop goes, we have this huge window on the front that we can open up on the days in the winter that it gets quite warm. When it warms up in the winter time, humidity tends to go up and we want to keep that to a minimum. And we also have around the entire perimeter of the coop, this vented soffiting. This extends out about 12 inches. It's completely open on the inside, aside from this covering that we have put in around the whole thing. And this just, this is mainly to keep predators, rats, anything like that, weasels out while still letting fresh air in and humid air out. So that's the winter chicken coop situation for our laying birds. Now with our meat birds, in years past, we typically bring in hatched chicks, which are mailed to us from hatcheries. And we start with our first round of 50 around May, beginning to middle of May. And when we get these birds, they just come in a small little box from a hatchery in Southern Ontario. And we keep them in the coop. And this is one point in time that we do add a little bit of extra heat. We use a quartz heater and we cordon off part of the coop specifically for the baby chickens until they feather out and until they're able to go outside. This year we decided to keep a breeding stock of meat birds over winter. This is our first year doing this. And one of the main reasons why we're doing this is because last year we had issues getting the, the number of birds that we wanted to get for our meat birds. We don't want that to happen again. So we decided it might be prudent to have a few chickens here that we could breed for meat purposes in case we're not able to get the volume that we wanted. Now with our meat birds throughout the summer, once they're old enough to be outside and we don't have to worry about them freezing to death, we utilize a chicken tractor around the property. And basically what that allows us to do is just move the birds around very easily and they are able to scratch and eat bugs and eat grass and weeds and all kinds of tasty little treats that the chickens like. I wish we could free range them on much larger areas all at once, but we have problems with predators here. Caddis typically does a pretty good job of patrolling the property and making sure that at least we know if there's something around that we should be aware of. She is very good with the chickens. She's been around chickens for years now. There's no issues with her attacking the birds whatsoever. She does try to herd them if she sees chickens that are just running all over the place. Up in the sky, we have hawks, eagles, and owls. Those are the main predators. There are also crows and ravens and things like that, but we really look at those bigger raptor type birds and owls as the biggest sky predators that we have. We also have coyotes, wolves, foxes, bobcats, lynx, and the odd time someone in the area spots a cougar. So we do have to keep an eye on things here. Our biggest problem, however, has been with bears. We have had bears right up at the coop trying to steal our chicken feed. We've also had bears checking out our chickens when they're in the chicken tractor. Oh, 
hopefully that takes care of them. I don't know. I honestly don't know. The key thing to keep the bears away is to have a sturdy door and to keep your feed locked up so they can't have access to it. Because as soon as they have access to your feed, that's a source of food that they do not forget. Yes, they'll, they'll definitely come back. And if you notice on the coop door, it is a round handle that you have to turn. You have to physically turn that in order to open the door. A lot of people put a latch type on their door and that latch, bears are pretty smart. Bears will figure out that latch. Out back behind our property here is just endless wilderness. And that is where the majority of these animals come down out of. Out of, we call it the mountain back there. It's not really a mountain, but it is just pure wilderness. And the animals are there. We live with the animals. We're not particularly interested in killing the animals. So we take proactive approaches here in order to minimize the amount of predators that end up on the property. And that includes not have any food or garbage laying out around on the property, as well as keeping any sources of food like compost far away from our animals. And I guess the last thing with predators is making sure that you lock your chickens up in your coop at night, because there are nighttime predators like mink and weasel and owls and things like that that will come and find your chickens. And we are not immune to that. Our first chickens that we brought here from Manitoba when we, when we moved, they were taken out by wolves. They disappeared and we weren't prepared for that. We got here, there was no coop or anything on the property and the small little coop that we initially built just was not enough to keep the chickens in and to keep the predators out. There's also another trick that we've learned that is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Talk radio. When we were having problems with the bear a couple years ago, we decided that we would put a radio outside and just let it play at night. The bear kind of kept coming around them. We could see evidence, we could find his tracks. Uh, you know, we knew the bear was still hanging around until we hooked that radio up and we just put it on talk radio all night long. After about a week of not seeing any evidence of the bear hanging around again, we were pretty convinced that that talk radio, the bear was kind of thinking to himself, okay, there's people there. I'm not going there. It's not just, it, it, the music is just kind of like a, a continuous drone of noise that the bear hears and, and gets used to. And the people's voices in music aren't as apparent as talk radio. So that's something to think about if you do have a problem with predators coming around and you're able to hook up some sort of a radio or something like that, just put it on talk radio and let it play. Hopefully this has been useful for anyone planning to keep chickens in a cold climate. So until next time, see ya.